un- un- unbelievable beats dot com production hey how you doing sean friedman from unbelievable beats dot com wanted to review how to record audio into fl studio without a sound card first i'm going to show you the poor man's way you could actually use your computer's factory sound card to record into FL Studio, or you can purchase an upgraded USB audio interface. And we're gonna review, review both. And I'm also gonna show you some screen casting mixed with you seeing me live like this. So first man, uh, first way, I call it the poor man's way, not a derogatory term, but it's using your factory sound card. Um, there's pros and cons for both ways. So you just have to weigh both sides and see what's the best for you, or at least experiment with the uh, poor man's way if you want to test it out. So poor man's way sound card, FL studio, recording audio. Um, in both cases, you have to have ASIO, uh, some type of ASIO sound card. FL studio comes with ASIO for all. So you're going to have to enable that in audio settings, but we'll get to that in the actual screencast, which I'll show you in a couple minutes. All right, poor man's way. If you actually have a mixer, this is just one example. Let's say you have a mixer and an XLR microphone condenser. Plug your microphone in there. Um, Quick little tip. This is very basic, of course, but condenser microphones need the 48 phantom power so you got your mic going in there you have your main outputs of an actual mixer Um, and you could also plug in whatever you want into here you could plug in an mpc you could plug in your tv a cd player turntable and of course a microphone Um, but we're going to get into how this all works and the pros and cons of the poor man's way versus an actual sound card Um, these main outs, once you have anything plugged in here, you know, you'd have a left and right. The output of the entire mixer, and this is the crucial part about the poor man's sound card. You have your little stereo mini, AKA your eighth inch cable. Um, you know, this was left and right out of the mixer, and this just plugs in to where your little microphone symbol is on most of Windows or Dell's type of computers. You would just plug it right inside, and you're going to actually, if it prompts you, which it probably will, what did you plug in? You did not plug a mic in, even though you're going to be recording with a microphone. Your line level. So you're lined in. And now I'm gonna to get to FL Studio screenshot of how the poor man sound card works as far as the audio settings in FL Studio. Bear with me. All right, here I am back on the telephone for you. Um, you're gonna open up FL Studio. This happens to be FL Studio 12. It's, the interface looks a little bit different from FL Studio 10, um, actually 9, 10, 11, but 12 actually looks much different but the, the shortcuts are all the same. So I'm gonna hit F10, the F10 tab on your Windows computer, and that brings up your audio settings and MIDI settings and all your settings actually. Um, you're gonna go right here on audio. Now in order to record this poor man's way in any type of audio into FL Studio, in this audio settings, you need to enable some type of ASIO device case in point right here let's say you were using the primary sound driver and uh, you're also going to have to enable the audio on your FL Studio mixer um, once you do record into FL Studio and this drop down right here is not working Um, just demonstrated that real quick sometimes it could trip people up but for the poor man's way and, and the sound card that actually comes with FL Studio or actually I should say the drivers you're going to use ASIO for all because it's free click it and then you will see over here um, if you did 
Um, you would actually pick whatever insert you want. I'm, I'm on, um, just on number 10 for no reason whatsoever. It doesn't matter which one you use. I'm on insert 10. I'm going to say mic in and just to relabel it. And while you're on here, now you have the drop down. And this would probably be, in my case, looks just like front panel. And then you would get your audio signal. And then you would actually be able to record into FL Studio using the poor man's way. Um, so that's basically it. And now I'm going to review the upgraded sound card way and talk a little bit more about the pros and cons of both. All right, back at you. Now we're going to review the actual USB audio interface or any type of upgraded audio interface instead of the poor man's sound card factory input and um, instead of ASIO for all actually as well. Um, the drop down will look different depending on what you purchase if you do get an upgraded interface. Now this is very old. This happens to be um, an Mbox 2. It's a real old one from like 2009. But in this case, once you get an upgraded interface, and this is just one example, there's many different types ranging from about 50 bucks all the way up to like thousands of dollars. Um, but this is a whole different situation. USB sound cards. This actually just has this little USB cable. Once you plug this in, this now takes the place of your entire inputs and outputs on your entire computer. Everything's gonna flow through here. Um, so you can have higher audio quality. You'll probably be able to mix a little better. Um, you're not gonna have, there's probably more stable drivers if you buy an upgraded one. And then uh, one of the pros versus cons, depending on how many inputs you have, if you get an upgraded interface, you know, you can plug in your guitar, your, all your drums, your vocalists, and if everyone is actually pay, playing simultaneously, then you'll be able to map that out into the FL Studio Mixer on individual tracks to then equalize and mix everything a little bit better. So an upgraded sound card does have, obviously have its benefits. In addition to that, an upgraded one, you could, um, you could map the actual outputs, depending on how many outputs you have, for like surround sound, headphone mix, or like a control room mix, and you could send different inputs to different places, basically. Um, so for the upgrade version, it also, even the headphone jack is now on something like this. You have a headphone there, and then you could actually connect speakers everything all the inputs and outputs are flowing through here now so you would connect speakers each left and right speaker one of these is output left and one of my speakers one is output right to one of my speakers um, but while we're actually talking about that let me backpedal a couple minutes back to the factory way huge points about the factory way as far as your headphone you know you obviously have your headphone jack here and when you record vocals you want to be using headphones so you don't get a feedback loop going into your from your speakers to your mic obviously but this can also um, connect the speakers even though it just says the headphone jack pretty basic but not no, not many people actually know about that this headphone jack I have headphones in there right now but actually same example as before if I actually wanted to use this as is back to the stereo mini thingy. You need a, another cable like this. You plug this in headphones and then just go <clears throat> left and right into each speaker. You know, you'll have a great sound to whatever monitors you go to. So just a quick tip back on that factory, uh, the factory poor man's way. You can use something like this on the, uh, the headphone little stereo mini deck. So poor man's way, the eighth inch stereo mini jacks are definitely your friend. The output and then the input from like a line mixer. Um, and still talking about the poor man's way, because you could obviously put as many inputs as you want. Um, different people, you know, a couple of guitars and then maybe a microphone. If, if you were playing with like a bunch of people, 
But the only thing is with this, you can only record on one track into FL Studio with the poor man's way. So for some people it would work if they just want to put down the vocals. Then you got to record kind of like an overdubbing to the next track to put your guitar there. If you needed that separation for each track to then later mix it better. Otherwise, you know, there is some type of beauty in just possibly putting it all on one track. If you're just jamming or you just want to get it recorded into FL Studio, but then you only have all, all the parts are just on one single track if you do that. So you could do that and not, you, you're not going to have much leeway to kind of fix and morph your sound into how you want it later. Um, you could do one at a time with this, which might suffice for some people, probably hip hop, obviously, because you can just do a vocal, then your next vocal, then your next vocal, then your next vocal. But in comparison to the USB sound card, the USB upgraded one is where each, because they can have like 12, 24, even like 36, 40 inputs all at once, all on separated tracks, recording it simultaneously. So um, obviously professional environments would have an upgraded sound card like that, but you can try the four minutes wait if you want to. And we still have to look at the actual screenshot of how the upgraded USB looks. So now back to this, sorry, I backtracked there for a second, but I had to review the pros and cons as far as recording into uh, the computer, um, as far as what can be separated and what can't. Um, so back to this USB way, you plug in your sound card, everything's flowing through the sound card. And I'm gonna get into the screenshot now for how it looks. All right, back on the screencast. Um, for example, if you were using an upgraded sound card, um, this probably isn't going to be completely accurate just because it's not actually plugged in because I was working with ASIO for all. But you would select your, uh, once you installed your software, sometimes it's plug and play, sometimes you have to download from the internet, or sometimes you have a hard copy CD just for in the installation part you would find your driver. Like in this case, um, Mbox 2, bam, okay, it said it couldn't open it because it's not plugged in because I was showing you the uh, poor man's way first. But once it was enabled and installed in your computer, this would be the one. And then you'd have all of your inputs would be on this drop down. Um, I think it has, on the Mbox example, it has like number one, number two, then it has like a digital in. And um, also, Another benefit while I'm talking about the upgraded sound cards is sometimes they have MIDI cables if you needed that capability as well. So for example, I could have just, this is um, pretending that would actually, um, you know, let's just say this was the USB example. I can say, I'm just gonna rename it. You know, guitar one. Rename base. I'm going to say drum overheads. Or this, that was an example. So this is an example number 10. You would use this drop down to select whatever input your guitar is plugged into on your upgrade interface. You got your bass. So now you would have your drop down again right here. You'd pick where that was plugged in. You got your drum overheads, you would pick your drop down again. And so you could see with an upgraded interface uh, when you would record all those simultaneously. And that gets into another topic about actual recording audio into FL Studio. Today I really just want to focus on the ASIO versus upgraded USB interfaces. Um, so both have their merits and you also want to get into this. Uh, well, actually, real quick, the master track, usually this down here would be your audio interface, but with the upgraded ones, again, sometimes you could um, you could send your mix to headphones, you could send it to surround sound, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So obviously, an upgraded sound card has more capabilities for ins and outs. Um, another huge thing in both cases, we're talking about buffer sizes. ASIO for all, um, buffer length, which is right here in this example. Um, 
you want it as low as possible without crackling when you're recording vocals into FL Studio. And you can raise it back up when you're recording virtual instruments and you're mixing your song down. Same thing for if you whatever if you ever purchase a USB sound card, same thing. You'd have another ASIO thing here and you can adjust the buffer size right there and that helps with delay by the time you speak into a microphone when you actually hear it come through your computer. Um, obviously it's pretty crucial to have a good performance like that. Um, so that's basically it. Um, hope you got some ideas out of this and it helps everyone out there whatever phase of music production you're in. Sean Friedman, UnbelievableBeats.com signing off.